YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking Auburn football. Go ahead and uh, share this video for one because that really, really helps as far as uh, YouTube goes. Once you hear the content, go ahead and leave a com comment. Vernon Speaks for us, Auburn. As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Coming into the season, you have the way too early top quarterbacks of the SEC. And there are many media outlets that talk about this. They talk about some of the top returning starters. They talk about some of the, the returning starters, quarterbacks that are actually going to have some impact on the SEC. And we're going to get into that as we talk about this video. Now, we do know Auburn obviously has had a coaching change with Brian Harson, Coach Gus Malzahn off boards the day after the Mississippi State game. Well, Auburn actually won the football game. I don't think quarterback play was absolutely ex exceptional. As a matter of fact, one can argue that quarterback play almost – possibly cost Auburn that game. Now, the quarterback we're referring to is Bo Nix from Pinson Valley High School. I think right outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Patrick Nix, former Auburn quarterback that I wouldn't say was an Auburn great, but had some great moments at Auburn. He's the son. He's actually the father, I'm sorry, of Bo Nix. Bo Nix comes to Auburn in 2019 as a true freshman quarterback and gets the starting position over Joey Gatewood. Now, let's rewind real quick how Auburn has gotten into this very, very non-publicized quarterback debacle. Malik Willis, who was not necessarily the presumed starter, but he was the most experienced out of all the quarterbacks there. And one would have thought that if you're managing a quarterback room as a power five football coach and you want to keep everybody on board. You have a spring practice with Malik Willis as your starter. And you have a battle between the, you know, kind of inconsistent Joey Gatewood and you don't know nothing about Bo Nix other than the crazy stats that he had in high school to battle for the number two position. But instead, after the spring game, it appears that there were some conversations on the back end that, was, that led to Malik Willis's departure and therefore very successful redemption at Liberty University under Hugh Freeze. Now you have a quarterback battle at Auburn between two unproven guys for the most part headed into probably the most challenging season of in recent Auburn history. I mean you're talking about starting the season with Oregon then a couple of weeks later you're talking about playing against Florida now you got the Florida rotation then you got Georgia LSU Alabama blah blah blah. Tough schedule, for sure. Then you go on the road to Texas A&M, and lucky, luckily you win. But here's where we are now. Bo Nix, the presumed starter at Auburn. Now, arguably the most experienced quarterback in the Southeastern Conference. Because if you look at all the sample size of the teams that he has competed against, I mean, you can't compare that to any quarterback in the SEC right now. Gone are the Jake Fromms, the Tua Tunga Valoas, even Mac Jones. Bo Nix is in a situation now as a three year, now going, and we're going to assume that he's going to be the three year starter at Auburn. When you look at the top 10 quarterbacks coming into the SEC, you got guys that have not taken a single snap in SEC play or a single snap in college football. 
that are being a little bit more highly regarded than a Bo Nix who has been, I mean, he's, he's, got, he's really been through the mud of the SEC and has had a winning record for the most part. Well, actually, it's not the most part. It's reality. Nine and four in 2019, six and four in 2020. So you talk about a quarterback that's 15 and eight, probably the, the toughest schedule in the SEC. But nobody in the media regards him as even a top five quarterback in the SEC. We're not talking about the country. We're talking about a five star recruit. From the state of Alabama, Pinson Valley High School. That's not even top five in the SEC as a five-star recruit. Now, how did we get here? I mean, there's speculation. Hey, maybe he should not have started his true freshman year. Maybe not. But now we see Joey Gatewood wouldn't have been the viable option either. But Malik Willis takes his show to Liberty. And now we can kind of sort of argue that maybe they should have kept Malik Willis, but we don't see what the coaches see. As a matter of fact, we don't see a lot of what we thought we saw in Gus Malzahn. But it's really, you know, I think we got to start to be kind of honest here and think not necessarily that Bo Nix is not the guy, but we got to look at what moves have been made. T.J. Finley from LSU probably would not have gotten a chance to start at LSU because I think, you know, obviously LSU was on the Miles Miles Brennan boat. He would have continued to play had he not been injured. T.J. Finley has some really nice moments, especially in the South Carolina game in Tiger Stadium. Had an okay start at Auburn, but then started to make those Same true freshman mistakes, obviously, that Bo Nix made. But we have to start to wonder. What is it that the media is seeing in Bo Nix that says, you know what, we can't really trust this guy. We give him top six, but we're going to put him top six under guys that hadn't even played college football yet. And why would we do that? Well, You can start with mechanics. Most of the Auburn fans, well, I wouldn't say most because I think that's a very, very uh, irresponsible thing to say. That a good portion of the Auburn fan base might think, well, maybe it was the offensive line. But what about the clean pockets? What about the clean pockets where you scramble into the blitz or you don't read blitzes properly. What about the fact that maybe it has been exposed that Gus Malzahn can't develop a quarterback? Maybe, maybe not. But as it stands now, the media does not depict Bo Nix as a top even three quarterback Five-star recruit under guys that haven't even played college football yet. I hope that this does not turn out to be the case. But right now, that's what the media is saying. Accuracy issues. Completion percentage issues. Show-up ability in big games have been the detractor for Mr. Bo Nix. Athletic ability to throw away. I think he's one of the most athletic quarterbacks probably in the country. But third down and six, can you trust him to get the first down? Very questionable. And the result says probably not. I, for one, as a talking head, if you will, for Auburn football, I want Bo Nix to be more successful than any of you know. But just like they say down in the Deep South, or maybe anywhere else, 
Now it's time to shit or get off the pot. Thank you for watching this video. Now that it's over, go ahead and like, comment, and definitely subscribe. Best case scenario with the like shares and all the other YouTube stuff that happens, I would like to be at 4,400 subscribers by the end of the night. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.